What's going on everybody? Here today to give you another Xbox 360 tutorial. Today we're going to be doing with the Samsung disk drive and we're going to replace the worm motor. Uh, the worm motor is the little motor that has a spindly looking thing that uh, is what moves the laser back and forth while it reads discs. Um, just to start it, we'll need a few tools and that's it. Uh, I've got some jewelry screwdrivers, uh, some people call them electronic screwdrivers um, and uh, what I'll be doing here is just uh, showing you how to replace it and I'm also going to tell you a few things to be able to really recognize if that's exactly what's wrong although it's not limited to what I tell you, there could be a lot of things that it does um, for starters, usually whenever you've got a drive that starts making a lot of noise, a lot of clicky noises, uh, just really, really loud, typically that's going to be something to do with the worm motor or the little arm that connects the worm motor and the laser. Um, and that's what we'll be, we'll be going through today. Uh, there could be a lot of other problems. Uh, it could just give you a disk read error. Um, um, if you have a bit the ability to actually have this open while it's running, if the laser turns on but it just doesn't move back and forth, then that's definitely going to be the worm motor. Um, and then, like again, the, this tutorial is going to be for the Samsung uh, for the Xbox 360 fat version. All right, so what we're going to do first is we're going to get this outer shell casing off. All we got to do is just take out these four screws. Okay, and then we just gotta pop everything off. Pretty simple. Comes slides right off most of the time. All right. Now with this, we're not gonna have to do anything on top. It's all gonna be underneath, so we won't have to eject the disc tray out like you commonly will with most of the other drives. Um, Alright, so the first thing we got to do is we're going to take this PCB board out and we're going to start disconnecting all the ribbons from all the, the laser and the other motors and things of that nature. So what you got to do is there's a little clip here. Um, all you do is pull that clip back and kind of pop the board up until you see that it's cleared it. And then there's, there's some little slots on this side that are typically kind of notched in there. So what you got to do is you just got to slide the board out in this direction and uh, pop it out. Okay, now we're going to start popping out these uh, laser ribbons here. Uh, it doesn't matter how you do it. Uh, the laser ribbon has almost always got to be last because it's kind of in the middle here, so it's really going to be hard to do it and not take a chance on messing it up. I always take this one. This is the worm motor. It's the smallest and one of the weakest, so I like to do that first so it's not being tugged at. Um, then we'll take out... This is for the uh, eject motor. This one's for the spindle motor, and then the last one is the um, laser. Now this one I would suggest pulling the tab. Now uh, you see this little blue tab here, because um, this one's harder to pull out than the rest, and this is uh, next to the worm motor, this is the weakest ribbon. You can tell because just by feeling you can tell that these are thick and stiff, and this one's really thin and a lot more flimsy. And it has to be since it does a lot of moving around. Okay, now, this is the roar motor. As you can see, uh, it's got the little spindle on there like I was talking about. Um, and the reason why uh, one of the big giveaways for this being your problem is, uh, is all the noise, you know, all the noise it makes. And the reason why it makes all that noise is because this, this arm, uh, if it's trying to move or if it's not moving properly, uh, it'll start, or if maybe even this is somewhat loose and broke, or if the worm motor has kind of gotten wore out, the actual track, um, it'll start, it'll start uh, losing traction and it'll start slipping, and so it'll start making clicking noises and other loud noises. Um, so that's why I was saying that earlier. Uh, but like I said, that's not the only thing it will do. Sometimes if the motor just completely conks out, you know, it won't make any noises because it just won't try to do anything. Um, Anyways, what we're going to start out with here is we're going to take off this uh, laser arm, which is what connects the laser to the worm motor. Um, all you got to do here is just take out 
the uh, one screw. We'll do that now. Definitely make sure you don't lose it because uh, if you do you'll have to find out a way to replace it. And it's not the easiest thing to find as far as a screw like that as far as finding it online. So make sure you keep all that together and in a safe place while you're uh, taking it all apart. Now we're going to go ahead and unscrew this border motor. As you can see there's two little screws here. They are very very small so you definitely have to have the smallest possible screwdriver you've got. Um, and even sometimes the smaller ones will, won't be small enough. You might even have to get a whole new screwdriver kit to make sure. Okay and that's taking that out. And that's all for that. Um, now let me put this up. Let me get my replacement here. Okay, this is a, a new one. It's actually probably used. I don't think it's brand new, but uh, it is working. So that's what we're going to replace it with. Alright, so it's the same way. Just reverse the steps. Uh, there are little holes, uh, little uh, plastic notches that go into the little holes here. You see there's a couple little holes there. Um, and so it's pretty simple just to make sure you've got it locked in the right place. If you do, it won't be able to just slide around or do anything like that. Um, then we'll take our two screws and we'll put them back in. Um, it can only go in those two holes so you don't have to worry about putting it in the wrong place. And even if it could screw in the wrong place it wouldn't matter just as long as it's held down in there. Okay. All right, now what we're going to do is put that laser, uh, the laser arm, sorry, back on. Uh, one thing I will say about this: be very careful when you tighten this back on because if this is over tightened, um, you're going to strip out the hole that uh, holds it in the laser, and um, sometimes it can be glueable back uh, with hot glue or even super glue. Um, but most of the time, that'll break within a few weeks, anyways, and you'll end up having to replace your whole laser. So all you need to do is just get it snug. It doesn't have to be tight at all, uh, just as long as it's all the way down. And that's all you really need. Um, so go ahead and tighten it up. Just snug it up a little bit. And a good way to test, kind of hold your laser. Make sure you don't, you're not touching any of the important parts or anything. Uh, but grab it by some of the pieces of plastic and then try to wiggle this arm around. If the arm doesn't really move, even if it just barely moves a little bit, then that's okay. Uh, as long as it's not just flopping all over the place, then you're fine. Um, and that's that. We just replaced the worm motor. Uh, now we'll we'll put the uh, PCB board back in and get all the uh, ribbons reconnected. All right. First, I always start with the Samsung. I always start with the uh, the laser uh, ribbon first because it's in the middle. It's the hardest to get to. Um, just make sure also that you're not doing this backwards or anything, so just make sure you've got the uh, the connectors uh, in the correct place back here, and uh, that way you don't end up having to start all over for whatever reason. Okay, and that just pops back in there. Just make sure it's in there kind of snug, uh, nothing too hard with that. Next we'll go ahead and put this worm motor in, since it's one of the more difficult and it's got a shorter reach on it. And then after that, these can just go in however, you know, whatever um, uh, way you want them to go in there. Doesn't matter which order, I mean. All right, now first you got to make sure and get these. There, There is these little notches right here, and they do slide in there. So once they slide in there, it's good in place. You just have to pop it down, and then that clip will get locked in place, and you're good to go on that. Um, now the other part, I'll just pop this on real quick, uh, but it should be pretty simple just to slide this back down on there. And then get your bottom piece and slide it back on. And put your four screws back in. I uh, appreciate you guys checking out this tutorial. It, was, it wasn't a longer one. Uh, probably a lot of you are thankful for that. <laughs> uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe. I put a lot of other tutorials on. I'm doing a lot of Xbox 360 tutorials right now as we speak. I've got about probably 20 videos on a list that I'm going to be doing. Uh, I also have a lot of um, case modding videos and stuff like that. 
I have other videos too. I like some video games and I like to post some videos of video game footage and stuff like that. But mainly it's all just repair and uh, uh, case mining tutorials. Anyways, just make sure and you subscribe. That way you'll get a lot of cool stuff and, and see a lot of cool stuff. And uh, until next time.